Yeah. And in the book, you really detail a lot of it in the whole process, which is pretty mm -hmm. intense to hear about, mm -hmm. I guess, to, for lack of a better description. And, and here, I just want to read uh, what you write, because this is obviously, well, not obviously, but there's a lot of people in this situation right now as yeah. we speak and who are probably grappling with all these kind of things. And yeah. I think hearing people like yourself talk about it is so useful. So I'm just going to read a bit pointing to what you were just saying. Eventually, it became clear that I was dependent on the narcotics for pain relief and that I was not chasing any high from the medications. The quote unquote experts had convinced me that the body uses the narcotics to treat the pain, not to get me high. There was always a large quantity of narcotic medications within reach on my bedside table, but I was usually able to resist the temptation to take more than was prescribed. I believed I was, quote unquote, dependent, not addicted, a solid rationalization. <laughs> I manipulated my use of the medications by adding heat to the fentanyl patches during the last few hours before I could put a new patch on. I would also split up the dose of triazolam to see if it would keep the pain under seven out of 10. This manipulation seemed to be helpful as it was administering the medication differently but this beneficial effect also wore off with time like everything mm -hmm. else. And I love that you use the word rationalization because in, in the 12 step addiction world, they often, they say rationalize, justify, minimize. And, and I know it's a little bit different in this context, but the, the way the mind thinks in that way is very yeah. similar. Well, yeah, you can, you can so how does anything, yeah. uh, negative, right. right. <laughs> Right. Okay. And so how did you, that's the next part in the book here is the detox, right? And the yeah. withdrawal, the climbing out. Um, how did you get from that to, I, I guess you said you had a, a specialist suggesting you go off the narcotics yeah. and everything. And how did that mis decision come about? And can you just talk to people about the detox and the withdrawal and, and how you managed that? Yeah. Um, it was, uh, wow. It was, um, it was difficult to come down and make that decision. But uh, like I said, it took me a couple of years to to come to the realization that I actually did have to do that. Um, so once I made that decision, I had two close friends, Judy and Klyam, who were both in addictions and, uh, and said, look, go to this guy who's a specialist in addiction, talk to him, share him the, your story and see what he thinks. And he was the one, he was great. And he was the one who said, you, you know, you are dependent on the narcotics. There's no question about it. Um, the addiction issue isn't something that we need to talk about at this point, but you need to get off. And the only way to do that is to go to the medical withdrawal unit at CAMH. So he was the one who referred me. And uh, and I went in and I was in uh, for seven days. And it was uh, the first, probably the first four days, three days in particular were, were horrible. I mean, it was a, uh, constant sort of nausea, vomiting, um, everything else. Uh, and, uh, they, uh, what did they, they gave, uh, I think for the first three days I was able to have one out of to try and get to sleep at night. Um, and, but by day five, uh, I was starting to feel great. And it was, a, it was in the May, I think it was in May one year, 2010, um, that I sort of was able to go outside and walk around the area outside. So I did. That's where I did most of my meditating, walking meditation, and uh, focusing on on what was happening. And um, I had all sorts of weird visits from people who were dead, uh, which was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and and also, I think that it's so hard to describe, but the decision to do this, there's that tension for anybody who has to make a very big decision like this to change or to detox or stop using something. Do you have any words that make sense to you or when you think about trying to describe that decision to people, how did you come to that decision? Um, because I focused on the, in my, I continued to meditate through this whole time. So, and my right, focus right. was, was on, what's happening to my primary relationships what's going on and i and i realized that that it was having a huge negative impact on all of my primary relationships my wife and my two boys and uh um i wasn't able to spend the quality of time that i wanted with them and even when i did um 
I was still caught by the pain, you know? Um, yeah. So we would go, we would, my wife and I would go out for dinner with friends. And after dinner, about a half hour after dinner, um, I was done. And I just go up to a bedroom and lie down, listen to my self instructional or my self uh, hypnosis tapes and recordings and try and stay focused on any anything that was not the pain. Um, so that was a, that I realized that if this is not a good life, I was waking up every morning thinking, you know, fuck, I don't really want to be here, <laughs> you know? And, and mm -hmm. you know, when I take my medication, I, I used to always sort of go, why don't I just take it all? I mean, this is crazy. Um, and I sort yeah. of said to myself at the time that this is ruining my, my life and my relationships and my family. And the only way out of it is to get off this stuff. Right. So that was the, and I guess, yeah, I guess they often say, you know, until we're in enough pain, we won't change kind of idea. And, and so that's similar to what I guess you're describing. And, and it came from the external things, right? The things that matter to you in your life. Okay, I want to read another part here. So this is in the chapter, like uh, as you're finding yeah. your way out. I purposely held back on the deeper thoughts because I was afraid of giving them more power by actually saying them out loud. It is a dilemma because I encourage patients and clients to do the opposite and share their struggles with troublesome thoughts and emotions openly because it actually weakens them. However, the fear of the negative impact on others has always been too powerful for me to stand against. I would try to reason with myself. Look, you advise kids and parents to open up with each other, to share their pain, and to be honest. You have seen this help their relationships, so why can't you do the same? <laughs> That's pretty deep. It's still a struggle. And, and, and I'll tell you yeah. why I think it's still a struggle, because it has to do with the chronic daily pain. The fact is that when I talk to clients and patients and parents about uh, open communication and sharing uh, difficult thoughts and, and emotions, um, it does help them and it does weaken the, 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 the difficult emotions uh, and it increases the, the power of their relationship in a positive way because parents can do something different. Um, parents can do something to help their kids to to be more open, to accept their negative thoughts and emotions, whatever they might be, and to validate that experience for them, right? And then the kids get better, right? The problem is with chronic pain is that my sharing those deep, dark thoughts and emotions, um, there's nothing anybody can do about it. There's nothing anybody can do to relieve that. So, that, so it, it becomes... I see it as more of a burden with struggling with chronic pain. Unfortunately, it sort of leaves you to deal with it yourself. <laughs> uh, right. And, and yeah. I think the, the, you know what, to be frank, the only reason I'm still here is because of my meditation practice. You know, that's the only reason. Because in the meditation practice, I can connect with that, with a positive uh, sense of, of being and, uh, and I can ground myself and I can focus on what's important in life and that I'm doing my best, right? And that me right. sharing this yeah. with my wife, for example, would just put her in a position because she can't do anything about it. So I have, I still struggle with that issue. How much? Yeah, yeah, how thank much you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that just, that sounds very difficult and I assume many people in similar situations must struggle yeah. with that tremendously. Yeah. Yeah.